Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Romans 911 for today, Thursday, July 20th. I can't believe it's already the end of July, and it's such a beautiful time to be together. So I'm just going to open us up in prayer and begin with Thanksgiving, thanking God for who he is and thanking him for just the ability to praise his name and to praise his name openly, to praise his name without hindrance, without encumbrances, to praise his name because he sits high and looks slow. And even as we praise him, we know that our prayers and our praises are sweet smelling aromas to his, to his nostrils, that they are rising into the throne room of heaven. And Father, we thank you for that. We ask that as we enter into this time together tonight, seeking unity, as one new man, the one new man, a complete family in you, that you would guard our hearts and minds, that everything we say would be pleasing to you, and that anything, Lord, that we are seeking to understand more deeply, we're asking you to tonight release the spirit of revelation and even deeper wisdom and understanding. And equally, Lord, we thank you that you are God and that all things are possible through those who, for those who believe in Christ Yeshua. We praise you for all things and thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mavarine. Uh, welcome aboard, folks. Uh, my first request of us today is that we would be able to see you, if at all possible. We could certainly be on a phone call and not see each other, but if we're on Zoom, it doesn't make much sense if we're on Zoom, but then not seeing each other, we might as well use a telephone. So women, fix your hair. <laughs> Guys, you know, take off that wife beater t-shirt, you know, and try to look half decent. All right. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, I, I have some things I want to talk about, but you know, when we had our, our, our when we do our life group here, one of the things that we've got in the habit of doing is the first thing that we do each week is we ask people uh, whether or not they've had a miracle. What's the miracle that they've experienced this week? So I'm going to start with that. And if you've had a miracle, um, we want to hear it. I had a miracle. Come on, Diane. <laughs> okay, so real quick, this was just a, like icing on the cake or the cherry on top about, um, I was blessed to meet Grant and Holly face to face in Maryland at the Takuna America Leadership Conference recently. But the cherry on top was, to my surprise, you know, we, I have this meeting scheduled for July 27th with the Go to Nations Executive Leadership Team and, uh, to my surprise, one of the vice presidents of GoTo Nations was actually at the Tacoon America Leadership Conference and had actually already gone through the Roman Simon One book. And I, it's a long, crazy story how he ended up there. Um, but long story short, I invited him to the meeting and that was just a great catalyst to further prepare us for this meeting on the 27th. And um, yeah, so that was a huge miracle. Um, Amen. Because he's like PhD, level, doctorate, teacher, you know, and that was just a great, you know, a great, yeah. So thank you, Lord. Do you know what PhD stands for? <laughs> Diane. That's really do, sad. Do you know it, what PhD sad stands that I, for? It, stand, it stands for piled higher and deeper. <laughs> um yeah okay so much for that <laughs> any other miracles okay it, it means a doctorate your your, your doctor ph is a is a philosophy okay so doctorate of, for, as, of philosophy as nurse, I work with okay but, doctors that's, and but it's piled higher and deeper <laughs> is a more appropriate translation i might tell it's 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 new king james is what that is. It's not King James. It's New King James. Yeah. Yeah. Um, come on, a miracle. Anybody had a miracle? Come on, life is miraculous. There's divine appointments for not having miracles. Then I would suggest you got to say, Lord, I want divine appointment. 
I want to tell you, when I have prayed for divine appointments, God actually gives me divine appointments. I go in, wow, there's a connection here between my prayer life and what God does. Wow. Okay. Anybody else? Well, I'm going to step out in faith on this one. Um, I'm in a miracle in the making. Uh, my next door neighbor is Jewish. Um, wonderful name. <laughs> Her last name is Jacob Kahn. Her first name is in the Bible as well. And uh, she and I um, got together for tea. She heard that I was, I, I did meditation in the word of God. Come to find out that she is not an observant Jew, nor is she even close to Christianity as she is into Sufism. And if you want to look that up, you can. Very spiritual woman. So she and I had tea and we decided to put together another tea only at my house and invite our neighbors. So that was to be held yesterday. So as we got closer on Monday and I got one call from one of the six that was invited that she couldn't make it, I thought, oh, you know, I need to call people to be sure that they're coming. As it turns out, I could not get in touch with anyone <laughs> except for my next door neighbor that was not the one who was having the tea with me. Come to find out my neighbor that was having the tea with me, the Sufism Jewish daughter of Abraham. Um, had kidney failure mm -hmm. and so she's in a post-acute convalescent facility and mm -hmm. um i only found that out because i i knew a friend that she had and i got in touch with the friend i was concerned mm -hmm. so i was praying all along for months now how i would be able to be a part of this woman's life or to influence her or to pray for her and um i think the lord is giving me my opportunity so like i'm telling you i'm stepping out in faith to say i'm expecting a miracle with this woman the first of which would be that she would realize who she is in in her savior is yeshua and yeah. um that, that's what i'm praying about and for and i believe it's a miracle that i happen to live here at this time in this place and was trying to get together with her for months and it's like the Lord presents this opportunity for her to receive a healing from the Lord and to know who she truly is in, in Abraham and Yeshua. Well, and, and Earl's story about his daughter, Casey, and the mm -hmm. miracle that took place mm -hmm. there was when the Lord said to him, you need to shift your prayers from mm -hmm. or ho the hope to mm -hmm. the gratitude that it's mm -hmm. already done. And yes, completed. Lord. I okay? agree. Thank the, you. Father. God already has people healed. You know, the, this whole idea of where we are in the Lord and the one new man is something that has been completed. It's mm -hmm. it, the miracle mm -hmm. was done. Okay. Now the question is, how do we walk in it? Because when we're asking God for divine appointments, is that an if or is it a genuine expectation? God, please bring me divine appointments, at which point my next prayer should be, and open up my eyes to see them when they come. Because if I pray for divine appointments and we're living in the realm of miracles, that's it. They're coming. They're coming. And so it, it, it changes our whole perspective about how we see life is when we walk out the house, it's sort of like, which, I don't know what you're going to do, God, but this is going to be good. You know, <laughs> so, so there's a whole yeah. behavioral shift from the hope of God being a what if to a hope of God being, I'm just waiting to see how you do it. Okay. I hope I communicated that, did I? Yeah. I am hoping to see how. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yes. But Earl really, I mean, Earl tells the story and he's yes. here on, on the call, but he, he walked out in the garage in the hospital mm -hmm. when his daughter was failing and basically said, God, she's yours. Mm -hmm. are, are you taking my daughter home? Are you taking her now? Because if you're taking her, Lord, I'm not going to try to keep her from being with you. But <laughs> it rules at the point of, at that point, giving up because he doesn't know how she's going to get out of it because she keeps failing and the doctors keep getting these negative reports and so on. And that was the transition. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that because I want to go down the story of Earl and Casey. I'm saying it because... The one new man is a flat out miracle. Mm. It is. It's good. That's what it tells you in Ephesians. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, mm-hmm. he broke down the dividing wall. And God allowed the dividing wall. So, I mean, your first testament concept of, of God is, is that he separates Jews. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take this group of people and I'm going to put them over here. And I'm going to put them underneath my magnifying glass, and I'm going to allow the whole world to see what happens when the Jewish people do it well, and what happens when they don't do it well. Mm-hmm. And we're going to see how they get blessed, and we're going to see how they run into trouble when they hit the hornet's nest, and they don't do it my way. And so for all of this thing about being chosen, we're just as chosen as the Jewish people. Our own walk with the Lord goes the same way. We know what it's like when we're in the center of God's will and we're being blessed. And I don't know about you guys, but I certainly see how God basically pumps the brakes when I'm not doing it his way. Hmm. I want the ministry to go this way. And how come this hasn't happened and this, that, whatever it is. And the Lord, it's very clear. You're not doing this the way I want you to do it. Going, ouch. But that's me. Now, so I'm accepting that the one new man that Jesus does, that the word of God is something that we're here because we all believe in the word of God. and We all believe that it's true. And that's why we're on this phone call. Not just that we're walking as believers, but that we're on a call here to do intercession based upon something that we have already accepted and believe in, that the one new man is a reality, has happened. Jesus has done it. And so we're here on this phone call so that not only do we get blessed, but then we can do what God called Israel to do, which is to be a blessing to the nations. So this is where we get fortified for the things that we already know. Uh, You know, this is that thing when you're a pastor and people are going, well, I'm going to this church, but I'm not being fed. Anybody ever hear that expression? You know, I'm not being fed. I'm not getting what I want to get. And I'm going, well, why don't you just bring it with you then? <laughs> you know, bring the food. Be, be, be the, the, uh, the lightning pole, okay? Be the person who God sees the, the, the miracles coming through. Um, Amen. Amen. Because God is intentionally putting us into places where he's not there because he says, I can trust you to bring my presence there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there, there's a, a dynamic shift. And I believe that most of the people on this call not only live there, but look for those opportunities to do it. But guess what? I mean, we come on these fall, on these calls, a lot of times we're, we're broken. I didn't do this very well. I'm not, you know, I should have, shouldn't have said that to my wife. I cut the driver off, you know. I shortchanged this other person. I should have given the waiter a better tip. Whatever it is, and we're, the spirit's working on us. Okay, we've got that. But if we're walking in the spirit, the more that we walk in the spirit, the easier it becomes to continue to walk in the spirit and then to start looking for those opportunities the divine opportunities. I mean, Wendy and I were in a gas station the other night and I don't know why I'm filling up my car and there's a car parked in front of a pump and the guy's not pumping gas. And he's just sitting there the whole time that I'm pumping. And finally, I just, as I'm getting back in the car, he said, you okay? And the guy, what? And he rolls down his window. I said, are you okay? He said, no. And he was having major problems with his brother. And some guy lived across the street and he says, I don't know where God is in this thing. I'm going, yikes, that's, you know, this is in a gas station. And I, it just, there it is. And we just, we just witnessed to this guy. That's all. And he says, I'm just not sure about God. You filled him oh, up in the spirit, bro. There you go. Yes, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I don't know if you ever got gas or not, but he's really got filled. <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of hot air. Okay. But, uh, so this is not an unusual thing for us. I mean, if we're carrying the glory of God, why would, would God basically put us on the bench? Say, I don't want you out in the playing field. Of course not. So it's like the expectation is, is like, okay, God, this is great. I've got your glory. How do I represent the one new man to these people? We were on a call this morning with a man by the name of George Runyon, and he was defining 
the one new man is Jesus Christ. And we have all these different theories about the one new man, but he's basically saying it's Jesus Christ. Ephesians says, for he himself, okay, is our peace. So it doesn't say he, it says he himself. It's a double pointing to who Jesus is and what Jesus did. And he broke down, says that both of them would be one. But where does the oneness come from is because of our presence in him. So about five or six days ago, I'm sitting there and I'm just praying and, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I, and I felt the Lord said, be me. It's really good. That's good. I went, wow. Wow. And on one hand, you can say, how the heck do I do that? And on the other hand, you go, wait a second. He's already got, he's put his spirit in me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Bob, just come from that place. That's a great assignment, you know? And you know God's not going to make that hard. That's like, accept the reality of who he is in you and come from there when you speak to people. So, I don't need the guy in the gas station to remember me. I just want him to go, I think I had an encounter with somebody who really believes in God and demonstrated that. And then he goes right to God for his answers. He's not trying to come back to me you know what you did in that moment bob you brought heaven to earth in a kingdom sense yeah you, you brought god's um government and yeah. love and all, all the things that he needed wisdom and that's what you did you reached up to heaven and that is that's what it says in the lord's prayer so you know? now I, i'm going to lose my reward for a gift i did this morning okay because it tells you that if you share those things that you lose your reward i'm going to lose my reward on this because i think it'll bless you so you guys get this okay i'm walking i dropped off my car at the dealer to get a service and i'm walking to join some friends at, at a restaurant um and i'm going by i think it was a carl's jr or something and there's a guy out front who's homeless and i can sort of look at him he's got his backpack and so on i'm going you can sort of sense that, you know, and I'm wondering, do I look at them? You know, one of the ways to avoid talking to people is not look at them, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm also going, Jesus would have looked at this guy, <laughs> you know, so I look at him and he looks up and he sort of mumbles something at me and I'm going, okay, Bob. So I said, what'd you say? He said, could you help me get something to eat? I said, well, yeah. So I said, what, so I said, what does it cost to get something to eat? You know? And we're in front of Jack in the Box, and I'm looking up $5.19. You can get this, that, whatever it is. And he says, $10. I'm going, whoa. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm thinking, you know, a dollar, a couple dollars. You know, it's just, what do you do? You just sort of do something, and then you, you've done something, and you've appeased your guilt. But have you blessed him? You know, so I reach in my wall, and the first thing I see is a 20. And I'm just, sure, here you go. And I give him a 20 and you can sort of see him take a step back. It's like, whoa, you know, because I'm giving him more than what he's asking for. And, and then I just started talking to him. I, I said, will this take care of you? Because I know what the answer is going to be, but obviously, he, please. So we have a short conversation. I find out that it, it, it's his name and, you know, so on. And but basically after a conversation, He's a nice guy. I said, you know, there's a church right over here, 10th in California. I said, you should go there. And then I said the thing that the Lord's taught me to say to people that are in this situation. The church needs you. We need you. These are people that don't feel wanted. They don't feel needed. And God needs these guys. These are the people that Jesus went after. Why did Jesus go after these people? Because we need these people in the church. And I want to tell you, the look on somebody's face who's homeless and who's destitute and doesn't know where to go and is, and is begging for a meal and so on, for him to hear that he was needed, his countenance shifted. <laughs> that fed him. Yeah. Not the 20 bucks, not his jack-in-the-box meal, okay? What fed him was his understood, understanding that he was needed. And mm -hmm. I said it to him twice. And this Good. is looking in the eye thing. It's sort of get down to they realize that you're going to make eye contact. So I'm like making it so he 
he can't do that shy thing. And then repeat it. We need people like you in the church. God willing, he'll come. You know, I don't know what happens after this, but this is where one new man is. This one new man is that fulfillment of who I am in Christ. We can talk Jew and Gentile stuff. I can go down that road theologically a long ways, and we'll probably get there on this call. But, you know, where I am is one new man is the fulfillment, and it's the miracle of what God did in order to bring us into relationship with each other. And so the only other question now is, is am I acting that way? Because if I'm acting that way, God's going to do miracles. Flat out, you guys. And that's how he wants us to live. And this is not because, quote, all of a sudden I got something figured out. No, God just waits to the right time. And he puts you in there because you're the right person for the job. That's why he puts you in that gas station or in front of Carl's Jr. And then just to love on these people and not try to, you know, dump the whole scriptures in the Bible on them, you know? You know, the only people that Jesus really talked a lot of scripture with were, were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Most of them was like, what do you need? You want to be healed? You're healed. Your faith has healed you. He wasn't trying to unpack all this, all the scriptures. The only time he's unpacking the scriptures is when people ask him scriptural questions. It's okay, you want a scriptural answer? I'll give you a scriptural answer. In the meantime, this woman's son is dead. What do we do about that? How about we raise him from the dead? You know, it's like Jesus is so practical. It's just, it's almost scary. It's like he's not trying to bring a religion. He's just going, what do we need? We'll just fix it. So he's hungry, give him something to eat. And then we're acting like we're also spiritual. And so I'm going, well, if that's spiritual, okay, call it spiritual. But I'm going, I think that's practical. So before the phone call, I'm thinking that God has made me a practicologist. That's dangerously close to another word, okay? Yeah, I was going to say, don't, don't, don't go to the next one. You know, dangerously close, okay? But it's like, that's what he wants us to be. It, it, in some cases, it's like we're going to places where other people don't want to go, you know? <laughs> you know? What do practicologists do? You know, it's like they're playing around the part of the body that is unmentionable. You know, it's like, but we're practicologists, but we're playing around with parts of the body that other people don't want to mess with. So that being said, all right, what have we stirred up here? Okay. Do we start praying or has somebody got somebody hearing or feeling something out of what it is that all this banter that I'm tossing your way what do people got somebody give me some feedback if not we'll just go into prayer okay i'm listening um i just want to say that your blessing did not get removed from you because you told us or whatever you said in the beginning i know oh, goody, you're joking. Goody. yeah no because what you did is the testimony of jesus and whenever the testimony of jesus comes forth it is prophetic <laughs> prophecy which means it's replicating is duplicating and so everyone's going like oh, but it's going to it's going to replicate itself for sure but there was one little thing that came out to me because here i'm thinking of esther her name's esther and i'm thinking oh lord you know just just hear me out <laughs> lord i just need a holy boldness i mean set apart your boldness and then he says i've already done that priscilla read acts 1 8 <laughs> So the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you with power. And we know the power. It's the dunamis. It is figurative, specifically miraculous power. That is yeah. within the Strong's word of G1410. Yeah. Miraculous power. And we're talking about miracles. And so, Father, before we even pray, Father, I want to pause in my heart to say, hmm, is this something I already have? So I'm just going to ask you, and then I'm going to work in it. Yeah. I think most of the time it is. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Not like he doesn't have stuff to teach us. You know, you can't basically spend a day on the planet without learning something. So we know that. 
but boy, to walk in what it is that we already have uh, is a, a level of acceptance of who God is in us. Uh, and, to, and how do we do that and be humble? And, and, and when Jesus says, be me, wow, what does that look like? What does that look like? Any other comments? I think, isn't that what the father told Jesus? He said, just, he said, be me. Because when the apostles are confused, when he's saying, I'm going to the father, and they said, well, can you show us the father? And it's like, dude, I've been with you all this time. And you're asking me that. So, yeah. Uh, but I, I do want to add one thing. I think we need to, in the minute, in the moment, in the situation, in the circumstance, I think we always have to go and and uh, check in with, with the Father and say, um, what do you want here? Oh, yeah. yeah. Because otherwise, you know, we're, we're guessing. And there's so many times where if you need to get a download right away and you need some clarification or whatever, it's there. The, you yeah. know, it will be sent to you, the resources, et cetera. But, the, but more importantly, I think pre, uh, earlier, we had, we need to know the wisdom and that's, you know, what to do or what to say in that particular moment with that person or with that situation, you know, whatever it is. Um, Cause that's kind of ha what happened with me with Casey. Um, he said, after he told me, I, I intend to heal your daughter. I said, awesome. Actually, he said our daughter, plural. But then, but then the second command was a little more awkward, and that was go home and pray differently. And I was like, what? Well, and so, and he said, I'll send you the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you exactly how to do it. But you need to pray radically differently. Quit asking me. Because I just told you what I want. And you confirmed it, and you double-checked, and... So now that you know what I want, um, I've given you the authority to call it into being because now I'm, you and I are now on the same page with the same desire, with the same focus. And so I, don't, I didn't know what praying for somebody looked like other than the request or the petition part. And so when the Holy Spirit came, it was like, I wasn't even praying over my daughter. I was praying over the machines that were monitoring my daughter, my daughter's decline. There were four different machines that were behind her bedboard in the hospital near the ICU. And the Holy Spirit took it from there later on. This is two, you know, this is an hour later after I hear he wants to heal the daughter, but this is an hour later. And he says, pray over the machines that the the the, the dials or the monitors will reverse 180 degrees. There were four different ones that measured four different body functions, body physiology that were going south, radically south. And so that's what we did. We didn't pray over our daughter in that sense. And so that's the sort of precision that we can't just assume, oh, well, God would want this. Uh -huh. Or he he desires us. We got to include the details because that's where the precision of obedience launches the power. Sure. If we don't do, if we don't do the precision of obedience, the power, the real power, the divine power won't be released. And then we're into our own agendas. Yeah. Like I'm going to insist that God, you know, heals my daughter. I don't, I don't, I can't do that. I mean, I can, but that's putting us at cross purposes because I don't, if I haven't taken the time to really verify what he wants mm -hmm. in that scenario, but that's why I had to ask all those preliminary questions. I said, do you intend to heal my daughter? And that's when he started a conversation with me and he says, well, she's my daughter too. So I'm going, okay, but with all due respect, that doesn't answer my question. Um, so I, I had to rephrase the question. Do you intend to heal our daughter? And that was the hardest question because I'm thinking if he, does, if he says no, I am not going to beat my head against the wall demanding that God do what I want. And that was tough. That's really hard. But, but, but 
I think God was showing me, look what happens when we're on the same page. Yeah. Look what happens when we join forces and you say, thy will be done, not mine. And that's so the way. Earl, Earl, pray it for us the way that, that, in other words, teach us how to pray is what they would say to Jesus. Okay. So Earl, take us to heaven. Oh, okay. Well, Father, we thank you for the training that you're putting us through. Father, these are amazing, momentous times. And you don't want things done how we've been doing them. You just, you want it done the way you want it. And you're, you're a creative God. You're an innovative God. You're an amazing God that, that doesn't have a formula or that we can figure out so we don't have to lean on you or you don't have to depend on you or we don't have to consult you. We just, we, we always try to shortcut something by figuring you out instead of doing the intense um, discussion that we may not get our way in what we want in the, in the secular, what we want in the mundane. And so Father, um, I just thank you that you're showing us, you're teaching us that we need um, to really not just shift gears, but sometimes throw out the whole transmission that we've been operating on. I've, I've, I've never, I've never prayed that way before, but I think what you're, you're telling us, Father, what you're training us is that we have the authority from you. Uh, it goes all the way back to Genesis 1 and 2. You gave us the authority to have dominion over the material creation, not the fallen angels. They, didn't, they don't get the authority. You gave it to us. But Lord, authority doesn't mean license. Authority doesn't mean running amok and short-circuiting you. You've given us a protocol that we are to ask. That's what, what Yeshua taught us. What Jesus taught it was he said, ask the Father, our Father in my name. And I don't mean to offend anybody by saying this, but I feel that you know, guys, I have been looking for this in the Bible. I don't see anything in the Bible that says, pray to the Holy Spirit. And I think that's, that's training to say, don't conjure up spirits that can uh, disguise themselves as angels of light. Just stick with my protective protocol. It's protective so that you guys can stay in my will at all times. And that is, ask me as your father. I am the one who gives you protection, as it says in the Lord's Prayer, as your father. I am the one who gives you provision, as it says in the Lord's Prayer, as your father. I am the one who gives you your identity, your kingdom identity, as it says in the Lord's Prayer, with the two words, our father and it's jesus teaching us that wow our father and the lord just told us that face to face our our so what jesus had access to he's saying you also have access to just do it in a protective way ask the father in my name I don't know why we can't have to complicate things. Like we, we just go off the road. We get, we get in danger zones. And yes, the Holy Spirit's involved. Of course, the Holy Spirit is active. But the Lord's telling me he doesn't want the spotlight. There's going to be a lot of fake and phony signs and wonders. When the real revival you know, comes out, There'll be a lot of blitz and a lot of hype and a lot of fireworks. And people will run to it saying, that's got to be God, must be God. But the big difference will be, one will teach obedience to release the divine power. And the other one won't mention obedience at all. And they'll look the same in many ways. And one is genuine. And the other one is a phony. 
that leads to separation from God and destruction. And I'm just going to stop with this. I've asked this question, and when I pray, um, it, this often comes up. I have this question. I call this the Matthew, well, what is it, 7... 21 crowd. I think it's Matthew 7, 21. The group that says, when Yeshua says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven and into that long list of everything that group claimed. And they said, didn't we do miracles in your name? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we prophesy in your name? I mean, that, when I looked at that for the first time, if it, like, you know, it's an outsider looking in, I'm thinking, dude, that's the all-star team. Those are the ones that went to the World Series, right? And that parable is not designed to the unsaved. It's talking about people who know, supposedly know something. I don't know what they know. But God says, it's all about, he says, sorry, you didn't depart from me. I never knew you. So as I just asked the question, were they being presumptuous in launching out just to say, well, well God, of course, would want to do heal this or do that. Well, that's we have to separate our emotions and our soul life from going to going to God and saying, what do you want here? We might be surprised at some of the answers. But if we just because, you know, we're going to rush assuming God wants this or that. And we leave out that questioning, that inquiry, that checking, the double checking, the triple checking. Then that's where we can really be deceived and think, well, of course, we're doing God's will. And I, can you imagine the shock on those people's faces when they you know, are kind of shining their badges and they're saying, hey, you should be impressed, Jesus, because we have done all of this, these several things in your name. Don't you realize who we are? And he's, and the answer was, frankly, no, I don't. I don't. And I never, as a matter of fact, I never knew you. Now that should be sobering, but that's a sort of instruction that we have got to focus on because there's we're going into an era of there's going to be a lot of manifestations of two kingdoms. And Satan can do miracles. There's a book that I read when I became a new Christian. It was called The Beautiful Side of Evil. And if you don't think that the other side can produce miracles, we're being naive. And we can't afford to be naive. We've got to get this right. We've got to be so attached to God so that, you know, subtle things will we'll just, will know. And he'll, he'll we'll say, you know, I don't feel right about this. I, I, let me hold off. Let me see if this is the right timing. Oh, I want to do this, or I want to say this. And, and just going to God for the details. Is this the right time for this? Give me the actual words you want me to say. Check my motives. Check my incentives. Check me. Search me. Because I don't want to put out you know, a false witness out there. And I think if we don't really, you know, understand that there's a warfare out there and the enemy mimics, the enemy imitates, the enemy puts on facades that sound good and oftentimes look good and oftentimes make mental sense to us when we reason. But we can't use our reason always. We got to trans, trans, uh, Oh, what's the word, transcend into the spirit and say, yeah, but okay, all this looks like A, B, and C, but what's, what are you really saying here, Lord? And, and Bob, I'm not trying to comment on anything you shared at all. Please, please don't understand this as any sort of um, critique. I'm no. not, I'm not no, saying no. that at all. No problem. no problem. Okay. And all I'm saying is, is that when Bob handed off the ball to me on this Casey situation, that was the hardest, one of the hardest things I ever had to do was to say, I better be ready just in case 
for the answer that I don't want to hear, which is, no, I'm not going to save your daughter now. I had to be ready for that. But I was so exhausted from the intense prayer that was going on for three and a half weeks of requesting and petitioning and begging and, and pleading, and nothing was going in the right direction. Everything was negative. Four surgeries in 17 days. All of the monitors showing that the medicines didn't work anymore. And that she had the highest dose of this, the highest dose of this. And then you could hear it in the doctor's voices that they were giving up. They, they said, we don't know what else to do. I even had a surgeon, he said, if you know any prayers, you better say them. So what do you do when the experts tell you that and it's your daughter in the ICU unit? And I was exhausted. I asked that question just from exasperation to say, I don't know what else to do. We checked all the boxes. We've done all the formulas. I mean, I, I believe in the gifts of the spirit. I've been a Pentecostal for you know some 40 some odd years. And when nothing works, what do you do? That's the question. You go back to square one and you ask the question maybe that I should have asked from the very beginning. What do you want here? What's your heart? What's going to accomplish your kingdom purposes? we got to remember that because we're going into an era that's going to be full of manifestations that are going to blow people's minds. And we need to just, just take a minute, step back, and say, yeah, but is God in this? That's it. That's all I got. Father, I just pray that you give us that, that warlike discernment, knowing that wars are conducted based on information. And we have two fathers here, it seems to me, Father. We have the father of truth and the father of life versus the father of lies. And the father of lies has had a lot of practice studying us, learning about us. And he's really good at imitation. He's really, really an expert at fakery. And so, by the way, I don't know if this book is out of print, but I would recommend it if you can find that The Beautiful Side of Evil, written by an teen, American teenager whose family moved to Mexico. And they... Um, she wanted to get more spiritual, et cetera. She was raised as a Christian and stuff, but she got, you know, uh, caught up in the culture of the curanderos, the, the healers. And it was a form of, it was obviously a cult, but well, I should say, obviously didn't, I mean, she couldn't believe the miracles, you know, um, over and over and over amazing book, but it's another form of Santeria. It's another form of, uh, what they call it, hechiceria, which is witchcraft. And Satan can do seemingly really, really impressive, quote, in quotes, godlike stuff with a little g. And so we need to really, really realize that this is a warfare. Wars are won oftentimes by tricking the other side to think something that's not genuine, it's not real, it doesn't exist. Um, or it's not what they assumed or presumed. So I, that's all I would say in my prayer right now is just make us, Lord, um, good soldiers um, walking through a minefield. Walking through a minefield. Well, let's get some more prayers so we can get through this minefield. Amen. So folks, roll up your sleeves, punch that button, dig in. Stage has been set for prayer. Go ahead, Wayne. Uh, just to uh, cover your prayers, I think uh, I'm going to be speaking tomorrow. I think I would really just say that I invite you all to, to go um, to the Global Family Prayer and uh, mm -hmm. talk tomorrow. It's a real practicum that I'm going to go into. I'm sending the website of the um, resource that I'm going to be uh, informing us on, but there's just a holistic thing of what we've just been discussing and praying into. Um, I really do feel we're in a historical season of promise that God's equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry by divine revelatory outpouring is going to bring a cohesive 
fullness of his counsel and a confidence in the ever-present help that the, the merger of identity in Christ, that, that the one new man and the one body, the one army uh, emphasis of God's heart, um, that the John 17 fulfillment of his prayer will be accomplished in his bridal grand finale. And so, um, so Lord, I just thank you, God, for the fast, many members, many facets, God, of the, the beauty of your story. But Lord, we ask, God, that you would do a work among us, God, to make us one. Even as you, Jesus, and the Father are one. And so we invite the Holy Spirit to do the work, the finger of God touch in our lives. The collision, God, of all your counsel into a beautiful invitation to first love and kingdom fruitfulness as the bride made ready for your return. God, we are jealous for your story to unfold just like you prophesied and foretold scripture in the fullness of our identity, God, to be stewards and ambassadors, God, of a kingdom that will have no end. And we do want to be fully conformed to your image. So, Lord, we ask that you would make us hungry. Would you invite us, God, into the, to the destiny, God, to be uh, together in this race set before us by divine provision so that we're not reeling god from the multifaceted means of the enemy to promote evil god we want to be eyes fixed on the author and perfecter creator of heaven and earth god and so we just ask you to continue through these intercessory hours until tomorrow morning god that you would just really make us hungry god for the next chapter mm -hmm. to turn the page god of frustration irritation wrong focuses even unbelief god May we gaze upon the beauty of your plan and may we see you and meet you tomorrow to desire that you would work among us, God, and that you would answer, Lord, not only our cry, our, our, our intercession, God, for sanctifying work, God, that makes us ready for every good work. That Amen. we live from destiny, not from desperation. Amen. Lord, that you, your story can come to pass as we cultivate the preeminence of your priority in our lives, God, which is to love Amen. you and to love one another. And so we just thank you, God, that you're going to do a new work and a fresh work from glory to glory, day by day in our lives. And so we trust our hands, yeah. our, our lives into your hands, the faithful creator. And so I, just, you know, well, I just thank you, God, for the, the, this prayer call that doesn't end. Lord, I pray a wave of anticipation and hunger for the counsel, Lord, because you said, if you would have stood in my counsel, you would have turned my people from their sin. Mm -hmm. And Lord, if we, it is one day with you in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. And I believe Amen. we are the tabernacle and the courts of the Lord are in our innermost being where you want to dwell and you increase that as we, by the power of your cross, decrease. So our, our eternal, our eternal identity in the reputation of christ in us the hope of glory shines brightly and creates salt for a hungry and thirsty world it's your name we praise jesus for the father's glory and by the spirit's power amen amen, amen. thank you for that beautiful prayer wayne and you're talking about that he's uh he's going to begin and and, and yet when you look at um uh where is it? It's in uh, Philippians um, that he who has begun a good work, so that the beginning already has taken place. So I'm I'm not going to correct you. I'm just going to sort of dial this in a little bit and say the good work has already begun. So it's not like the good work is going to begin. Okay, the good work has already begun. So because that's the place he's teaching us to walk in. It's already started that thing so that the, the future is already assured, not because of what he's going to do, but both what he has done and what he's going to do so that we get both those things in the present. Because then everything we rest assured, we're not worried because he already started the work and he's going to finish the work. So we're just in the middle of this thing, watching him as he unfolds it to us. And he reveals a little bit at a time based upon our maturity and what we're capable of learning and seeing at the time. So uh, I bless you and I bless the work of your hands. And I just pray that the word that you bring tomorrow would just have life and light 
yes. and glory on it. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, Wayne. More prayers. We got five more minutes here, and then we'll hand it off and we'll go deeper into worship. Yeah, uh, I request you all that uh, keep on praying for the church in Pakistan. Uh, it's a Muslim majority uh, country. Pray for more miracles. Pray for uh, uh, the preaching of the word. And uh, pray for all the people who are persecuted here. Please pray for the acceleration and the growth of the church. I shall be so much thankful to you. Amen. Amen. Who wants to cover that in prayer? Come on, Joseph. I see you leaning in. Father, we thank you and praise you that it's your kingdom time, that your word to us is, thus says Lord of hosts, the revival begins to balance Colorado. So as that revival fire has been released here, it's been released in Asia already. So let the revival fire come with power and glory and restoration and goodness and joy and rejoicing in the Holy Spirit. Angels of light. Father, we yeah. come before you, ancient of days. We come before you, Lord of hosts. And ask for angel, you, angel of the Lord. I know you've already been in the land. There have been an intercession. You're there. Release the angels, we pray. As David prayed. As David prayed, as David knew, let your angels be released in Pakistan. Mm. Thank you that you gather together this remnant of your people, Lord. That is, that is more than we know. It's bigger. It's a big number that we don't know. We can't wrap our minds around. But you know, and you know the souls. It's written that the souls are yours. The souls, the father's souls, the sons are yours. And that as as these your souls come out and walk away from the world, from all the evil that's in that land, mm -hmm. strange gods. Better not God at all. Bow your knees in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Release God's people in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, that you're on the move, that you want your people back. You are jealous for your name, Lord Jesus. You are jealous for your people with great zeal. And Rushalayim in the spirit is meant to be manifest in Pakistan. Amen. Give them all the glory and the praise, Father. Glory, the glory that restores to them what's written in the book of life. For each one of your people in the land of Pakistan, before the world, and you, Yeshua Mashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ, and your, your anointing and fire and favor and power, Holy Spirit, we call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Bless you, sweet. Thanks, Joseph. Um, as we're wrapping this thing up, I got room for one, maybe two more prayers, and then we'll hand over the torch. Just as y'all were sharing tonight, I thought of, of something as the Lord was shifting me in this. Back in 2018, I had this encounter with the Lord where I saw Moses parting the Red Sea and Yeshua parting the sea of our minds. And then I heard, hear, O Israel, not even knowing or remembering it was the Shema. And so, Father, I just thank you for these words tonight because it is about your authority, Father. And even the last time when Lonnie was on this call and they were explaining about the importance of the authority of the father. And this, and then this season part, like that picture of Moses parting the Red Sea, Yeshua parting the sea of the mind, which is the intellect, the, when you were talking about wars, um, Lord, that the importance of this season to draw into you that our attachment and solidarity um, with you, Father, is getting our identity knowing our full protection and provision in you, that place of full surrender and uh, everything on the altar and be able to shema, to listen and obey like never before for our lives will depend on it and the lives of those we lead. So Lord, again, we just stand on that, your authority, Father, your authority. And just with this meeting coming up on the 27th, Lord, just I humbly submit that to you. Father, where I don't even know how to lead it. I don't even know what I'm doing. I just know this is you and just have your way with it. And if there's anything that I need to hear about it, or, you know, Lord, that you'll reveal that. Um, 
So we just set that meeting before you. Um, I ask for everyone's prayers. July 27, 10 a.m., where Grant and Hallie will be meeting with our yeah. GoTonations folks. And uh, Lord, whatever, have your way. Um, for the, such a time as this, Lord, we just lift it all up for your glory. We thank you for, for this ministry, for everyone's call, for everyone's heart, for you, Lord. Just keep drawing us near in that deep place of intimacy and oneness with you, where your resurrection power will manifest through our very lives. In Yeshua's name. Amen. So, um, as we wrap this up, I want to let you know that uh, here locally, there's going to be a an awake, a Latino awake event here in, in Los Angeles, Saturday night. The Lord has called the church to start to reconcile with the Hispanic community. They need to be embraced that we have you know, and it's, a lot of them have been in the Catholic faith and that God has only one church. And therefore he has said to us, you know, you need to reach for them. And, and the beauty of it is, as we've been doing this in San Diego, that we have been seeing them actively reaching for us just as we're reaching for them. That the Lord has spoken to their hearts and said, yeah, I want you moving in this direction. So we're actually meeting in the middle. We're not chasing anybody and they're not chasing us. That's beautiful. Uh, Sunday, we'll be at the River Garden Church to do an Israel Awake event in San Diego. Um, and so that will be uh, another outpouring of, of the one new man. And then I got a scripture this week that speaks of, for example, what happened with Earl's daughter, Casey. And this is out of Psalm 68. And I'm going to read verses 19 and 20. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. <laughs> There's a great picture. He loads us with benefits. The God of our salvation, Selah. Uh, and then here's verse 20. Our God is the God of salvation. Now check this. And to God, the Lord belong escapes from death. Wow, what a verse. And to God, the Lord belong escapes from death. You think about the, the different situations in scripture over and over again, where people are facing imminent demise, you know, and to God, the long escapes from death. God's going, I know how close you are to the edge. I know you're going in that furnace. I know King Saul's chasing you, you know, I know what you're up against. I'm going to get you, know, I'm, I'm going to keep you from dying. Wow. So I'll leave you with that word of encouragement. We plat, pass the torch over to Barbie and Terry. And we say, you guys, you know, tickle the ivories. Okay. 